Thank you. Thank you, Kosti, for your uh, kind uh, uh, words. And first of all, let me uh, express how happy I am to be joining uh, today's uh, fascinating uh, event. And I'm also particularly happy about the fact that uh, Colombia has decided to establish uh, a global center uh, in Greece, uh, in Athens. Uh, I remember having discussions with my um, wife, who's a graduate of of SIPA, uh, you're really pushing for the uh, idea of making this global center uh, a reality. And I do remember a visit that was organized by Nikki Keramers, then Minister uh, of Education, when a number of uh, very important American universities came to Greece to discover what the Greek uh, academic scene actually had to offer in terms of partnerships and uh, collaborations. And I'm so happy that uh, one of the positive uh, results of this opening up of, the, uh, of, of Greece to the world of academia has been the creation uh, of the uh, Columbia uh, Center uh, as a space uh, for, uh, for dialogue, but also for uh, transfer of know-how uh, and knowledge that can uh, really be applied uh, in solving real problems that we as policymakers uh, address. And uh, as I was listening through uh, uh, Pierre's uh, presentation, I thought about how relevant and how topical this discussion actually uh, is. It is very interesting that we are on October, October 1st, and as we speak, we are fighting a very complicated wildfire um, uh, in uh, Peloponnesus. It is extremely unusual for us to have uh, wildfires so late uh, in the season, but this is only uh, one indication uh, of the fact that the climate is changing and we are forced to constantly improve our, uh, our reaction uh, in order to be more effective in addressing these uh, extreme uh, weather events. And we talk a lot about mitigation and about bringing down um, the global emissions. And of course, Europe is at the forefront of achieving climate neutrality. And I'm, if you ask me, I'm absolutely confident that uh, the collective wisdom of humanity and the colossal amounts of public and private money invested in addressing climate change will eventually, eventually um, solve the problem of carbon neutrality. But of course, there is still a lot of time to get from where we are today to a world of zero emissions. And that is why uh, I have an obligation as, as prime minister, not just to think in terms of mitigation initiatives, and Greece has done its part because we have actually reduced our emissions most than, uh, uh, than uh, more than most European um, uh, countries. We produce more than 50% of our electricity now from renewables. But focusing on adaptation uh, and addressing these climate events needs to become a priority, not only for Greece, but also for the European Union. And there is a fundamental imbalance in terms of the funds that we have committed um, towards addressing the mitigation problem, bringing down um, CO2 emissions, and the money that is available to address these um, extreme weather events and their devastating uh, consequences. And I'm personally lobbying also within the European Union to make sure that we address this uh, fundamental imbalance. And of course, uh, technology can be transformative in um, helping us uh, manage these uh, events. I am fascinated by what you said and about the interaction we also have with, uh, with various companies in terms of having more advanced uh, weather um, uh, prediction uh, events, uh, you know, working with some of the big tech companies in order to have detailed uh, flood management uh, and flood prediction uh, models, predicting what a wildfire could do, um, um, uh, knowing better, understanding uh, the landscape, the weather, and how it will move and how it will behave. There's no doubt that AI is already offering us uh, incredibly valuable uh, solutions uh, in terms of uh, uh, actually addressing these problems on the field, and we need to up our game. Greece is investing more than 2 billion euros in civil protection infrastructure, and this is not just about planes uh, or about uh, fire trucks. Uh, um, uh, um, it's also about technology, uh, and that is why I'm so fascinated by these partnerships uh, that will enable uh, our, our services to be really at the forefront of what technology has to offer. And, and I do think, uh, Costi and Wafa, that there is a potential here. Uh, Columbia being a university that probably has the largest number of, of, sciences, uh, of scientists and professors involved in earth sciences 
uh, and in, in climate-related uh, uh, research uh, to structure this partnership in a more organized manner where we will set up some priorities and we, would even, we could even test new uh, ideas or new technology uh, in the fields. This is going to be uh, absolutely uh, critical uh, for uh, what we do uh, in the future. So I don't want to take up uh, too much of your time because I'm very passionate about this topic and I, but you didn't come here to listen. Um, uh, to, uh, to me. Let me thank you again um, for what Colombia uh, is doing in Greece. Let me offer again um, uh, the support of the, uh, of the Greek government. Uh, uh, we are opening up our, um, our public university system to the world. We want to try to bring uh, leading institutions to Greece in various um, uh, um, uh, formats. And the Colombia Center, uh, the Global Center, is a very good example uh, of uh, a leading university uh, sort of uh, um, accepting this uh, challenge and establishing this uh, presence in Greece. So again, looking forward to participating in other such very interesting events. Thank you very much. <laughs>